you know, he could this, just he could play. He could stop gaining weight. <laughs> I mean, Look, I I'm agree, fat, so but... I can say it. Like <laughs> yeah, this is one of those situations. Like it's not fat shaming. I'm 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 a fat son of a bitch. I can say these things. <laughs> so you wanted to bring up the Pelicans, which I I get, and this is less of a we expected them to right. start guns blazing without zion like it is no yeah. surprise that they are struggling without a guy who can effortlessly average 27 points a game or probably closer to 30 now that he's in his third year uh but right. what did you want to hit on the pals in particular so i think now that i i've kind of said it before so i this will be a little bit of a repetition but i do think that now that they are struggling and they are they don't have Sion in the lineup, I just don't understand why they don't give more minutes to some of their young, their young guys. Mm -hmm. Like, I think that's a failure. I don't really look at the record because right now I'm not expecting much of them, but I'm very disappointed. And I think it's a, it, it, and this is a podcast about disappointments. So I'm very disappointed in, and why they haven't played their guys more like and i especially look at kyra lewis I, again i i realize i bring him up a lot uh maybe the pelicans just don't believe he's that good which i think personally would be a mistake i think you need to give him a chance to prove himself but like he's playing 13 minutes per game and yeah he's struggling from the field and all that but if you're not getting consistent amount of minutes it's also more difficult to catch a rhythm and try to build on a successful game so i've been disappointing disappointed in them through that lens i want them to go all in on the young guys like they have a bunch of them just give them all the minutes that they could need and use and get until Sion comes back because what are you playing for otherwise like you're still gonna lose games so why not have an ulterior motive where you say okay you know we're, we're coming into this game we're trying to give it all and if we win great but if we don't you know, we'll live with it because our my our primary mission here is to give guys who are young a chance to play. That's mm -hmm. what I would like to see. I I, I think they're mishandling um, this opportunity that they actually have in front of them right now. Interesting. Okay, I, I hear you. I I do. I mean, I wonder. Part of it, I just think, is like the depth overall is not super trustworthy out, right. especially with Zion out, like. I mean, Herb Jones has started four of their five games and is playing 23 minutes a game. Yep. He's a second round rookie. Like yeah, that's... no, it, it doesn't account for everyone here. Like he's getting a solid minutes. Like Trey Murphy as well is averaging 22 minutes. But like, look, Jackson Hayes, not even 14 yeah. minutes per game. Yeah. Tyre Lewis, 13 minutes per game. Like it, those two guys should be getting more uh, opportunities. And look, I love Alan Shunas. You know, I do. And I've been clamoring for him to get 30 plus minutes per game. He's averaging 35, which is mm -hmm. fantastic in a way. But at the same time, you're kind of going, is now the time to do that? Like right, right. for this particular team at this stage? I, I mean, I think it, that must speak to how little they trust Jackson Hayes. Yeah. Yeah. Which is concerning in and of itself, right? Because he's in right. his third year now. Yeah. Like, and Josh Hart is out too. Like, yep. now is the time to get the young guys' minutes. Like, yeah, I mean, you almost don't have a choice. Like, you have right. no one else, but unless you want to trot Garrett Temple out there for 25 minutes a game. Well, they which, are playing him for 13 minutes where I'm like, why give those minutes to someone else? Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I will say, you know, Nikhil Alexander Walker is another young guy who has gotten a much bigger opportunity this year in the wake of Lonzo and Eric Bledsoe uh, both leaving this offseason. So mm -hmm. minutes are there, you know, averaging career highs across the board. Uh, problem is the efficiency. He's only shooting 35.4% from the field. Yeah. Now, again, yeah. like I, just so much of this will be corrected by Zion's eventual return. Like everyone slides down one rung on the the ladder, and like you know, you can't devote as much defensive attention to Brandon Ingram and Jonas Valanciunas and Nikhil Alexander yep. Walker and Devontae Graham when you've got Zion on the court. So those guys are going to have more open shots or more driving lanes because Zion's going to suck in two defenders to double team him. So I'm not super concerned here it I, i'm more concerned just we don't 
still have any real sense of when Zion's going to return or what shape right. he's going to be in when he does return. Is he going to be on a minutes restriction? Like, when do we see the fully unleashed Zion that we saw yeah. last year? Because he is, he especially if they do like the point Zion thing, which they were doing, like he is really that connective tissue that will make this entire thing work. But without him, right. just like they they go in most of these games and don't have a great chance. I'm not concerned about the record because I frankly I don't care right now because we know that Sion is out that's going to affect them. Like I, <laughs> I I really think record right now should just be thrown out the window. That's not the problem. You understand why. It's completely logical why they're losing games. It's just how do you react when you're losing games? You know your star player is out. You know one of your key role guys are out. Like how do you respond to that? Well, mm -hmm. you pivot into developmental minutes and then they don't like they play Garrett Temple instead where I'm just like, God, man, I mean, and, and like you said, if they don't trust Jackson Hayes in year three, that's concerning that yeah. I, I, I think there should be more red flags about the Pelicans that they're pro and then there are uh, just in terms of like that young crop that they've always been hyping up like look what we got from AD as well and all the draft picks and all the this this and that yeah you're not playing half of them mm. how yeah. how's that how is that working out I, and i hear you on not being concerned about the schedule because we would expect them to struggle without zion yep i i my only concern is given the reported unhappiness of Zion and members of his family, whoever it is, like this was supposed to be that season where they took a step forward and got into playoff contention. So it's it's understandable if they don't because Zion misses X number of games or X number of weeks, but like, is he gonna, at the end of the season, is he gonna hold that against the team that, you know, he could this... just, he could play, he could stop gaining weight. <laughs> I mean, Look, I I'm agree. Fat, so but... I can say it. Like yeah, this is one of those situations. Like it's not fat shaming. I'm 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 a fat son of a bitch. I can say these things. <laughs> I weigh the same as Sion probably at this point, man. Like so, it's <laughs> like I can say these things. Like, but this is this is his own fault. If that if he's not gonna take it seriously, and if it's all gonna be secretly like injuries and all that, like yeah. look, I mean. If if that comes if that happens where he puts the blame on the Pelicans like let's say he misses forty games, and he comes oh out after God. the season going well we didn't make the playoffs, then he needs to look in his own mirror in the mirror and go oh yeah that's because I didn't play because <laughs> I apparently couldn't keep my body up to par. Yeah, that well I mean the concern too even if let's say he comes back by middle of November or so you know misses right? the next few weeks. Here's our upcoming schedule. Sacramento, Knicks, Suns, Kings, Warriors, Dallas, OKC, which is their one easy game in the stretch. Brooklyn, Memphis, Washington, Miami, mm. Clippers, Pacers, Timberwolves, who have been frisky this year, yep. Wizards, two at home or two on the road against Utah, at Clippers, two against Dallas. Like that is just a brutal rest of the, you know. October and November. So, but should that matter? I'm sorry to cut you off, but really, I mean, you mentioned schedule, and I, I hear you. But if you have play, playoff aspirations, theoretically, should schedule matter? De I mean, it depends on when, like, when those tough stretches of your season are, and do you have right. a full strength roster, which they do not. Yeah, yeah. Right now. but like, let's say Sign is back on the court. Let's say Josh mm -hmm. Hart is back as well. They're all healthy. Like your your main goal is still to come out and win every single game, yeah, and Sion is supposed to be you know the, the the best one of the best young players in the entire league, which I I think he is. So if he comes back and they struggle even with him in the lineup, then what kind of reasonable argument does he even have to go out after the season, for example, and go well we didn't get it done? Like yeah, then it's because you weren't good enough to do it. Like, but reasonable argument, you're you're you're, yeah, <laughs> you're yeah, implying yeah. that a superstar needs a reasonable argument as a reason right. to demand a right. trade, which is very much not the case all the time. Yeah, no, I I still I've actually I've actually pivoted a little bit because I wrote an article about Sion 
and like how he's he's become a problem for the Pelicans. And I was kind of hatching. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was over at four, so I was like, no, you know, you need to focus on the the communication, all that. I still believe that. But at this point, I'm also leaning towards really figuring out what you can get for him. Like, making a real concerted effort engaging the market very quietly, of course, to see mm-hmm. what's out there. Because mm-hmm. I am not optimistic in this marriage whatsoever. Yeah, that's a. I mean, that's why I'm alluding to this schedule and Zion's uncertainty. Because yeah. like, what happens if they are, you know, like two and twelve yeah. by the time he comes back? Yeah, and are just like yeah. all, almost already out of the playoff race. Do they become sellers at the deadline? Do they realize like we need to really reconsider our future with Zion because he's only going to mm-hmm. get more pissed about this, even though you know a lot of this is his fault for missing this yeah. much of the season already. It's I mean, I went a, I went on mess. Danish TV and basically said trade him, and I I, I think mm. it's I think it's time to at least take, um, you know, the future into their own hands, right? Isn't that really what it comes down to, to in regards to the Pelicans? Like they had Anthony Davis, and suddenly he decided I wanted something else, which okay, fine. Then they got Sion, and Sion is kind of maybe on the fence of saying, hey, you know what, I want something else. Now is probably the time for the Pelicans to go, you know what? We want something else. We want something that's reliable. We want to control the situation for a change. We want mm-hmm. to control the narrative. But yeah. if they don't, and Sion makes that trade re- request, uh, you know it's not going to look pretty first and foremost. And secondarily, are they going to get the, 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 the right offers for him? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. All right, more. What is a lock in sports betting? A lock is simply put a bet you can't lose. And with my bookie, you can't lose on their NBA lock of the season. Place a bet on either team to score between the Dallas Mavericks and the Denver Nuggets. And when the first bucket hits, you win. Let me put it like this. An NBA game has never gone scoreless. So you know, this is a lock. It doesn't get any easier. With superstars like Jokic and Doncic going head to head this Friday night, It won't take more than a minute of game time before your bet cashes. And that's not all. Get paid Friday, wake up Saturday, and throw down on UFC 267. On Saturday night, MyBookie is giving all users a $100 risk-free rager on the light heavyweight championship main event fight. So don't wait, head to MyBookie.com now and use my promo code NBAPOD, that is N-B-A-P-O-D, and MyBookie will instantly double your first deposit. That's promo code NBA pod. So you can double your funds to double your winnings. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. 